You cannot solve a problem with the same consciousness that created the problem. This also goes on to say you cannot solve an issue or, or anything with the same tools that caused that issue. Nietzsche, I think, was quoted as saying, you cannot take down the master's tools, you cannot take down the master's house using the master's tools. And we're going to get into this, how this relates to your life and how you can use new tools or begin to find new tools. The paradox, or at least the difficulty with that is, well, you've been using the tools you know, and you don't know what you don't know. So how do you find out what you don't know? I go back to this wild and crazy press conference with Donald Rumsfeld, who said, there are unknown unknowns, and there are known unknowns, and then there are unknowns. He just went on and on. Um, different video for another time. However, you have an issue. You have a pattern. You have something that's been happening in your life over and over and over. And you think that you're trying new things to get out of it or solve it. Or we always get into this as well. I want to be very, very clear about this. We do more. We crank it up. We, we turn up the heat to then undo the issue. And I always go back to this idea of swimming. When you try to forcefully get through water, you will go slower. However, when you start to work with the natural shape and form of your body and the shape and form of the water, then you're able to go through it. This is called form over function, or I believe function over fashion, however it goes. We'll, we'll get to the bottom of those in, in another time, but the main quote I'm delivering to you is, oh, form follows function, or one of the other ways around. Either way, I, I've pro possibly already uh, messed up this video by saying that. However, this leads me to a point. I used to think that every video had to be perfect. I had to always know the exact quote. I don't really need to always know it. And if I follow that, follow that lane, I'm not really going to get through many videos. Actually, I'm going to be sitting there a long time with analysis paralysis. And the long story short, somebody can correct me in the comments if they want me to. If they want to, they can go and say, you know, oh, it's function follows form or whatever it is. But the idea is that we would have to have perfect form or our best form in swimming before we were actually done with the, the workout. It wasn't necessarily the time you got. And I'm, Shannon Sharp says this many times, and say what you will about Shannon Sharp. I, I, I've been watching him for a long time. But he says one of the worst things that can happen to a football player is that you can win a game with poor form. And it tells you that, oh, well, I can just go out here and just do whatever. And I had a, a, an actual coach tell me, hey, you're only going to go so far with this form. And at a certain point, you can't go any farther. And I was like, I do what I want. And <laughs> what ended up happening was I hit a wall. And because I didn't have the new tools or I didn't have the tools that he knew, which were going to get me to the place I wanted to go, because I didn't, I didn't tap into that at all, I went exactly where he told me I was going to go. And that was only so far. Uh, it was, I think like a story from Darren Waller who spoke about being uh, addicted to drugs and alcohol, tight end for the Las Vegas Raiders at the time. And I think he, he had told another player, gotten another player sober, or it was the other way around, but he was essentially saying, I can't do this anymore. I can't keep this thing going and be a professional football player at the same time. And, or, or just be in football. And it, one, one of them had to go, obviously, because you can only go so far with the tools that you have until you get new tools or you let go of the consciousness and or tools that got you to this place to get new ones to take you to the next place you want to go. And you first have to accept that. Once you accept that, the world will open up. And once the world opens up, you have to have the eyes to see it. There are many times, many people, many moments in my life where the world opened up and I, in some cases, disbelieved it. I said, no, no way, no way. 
and then went back to the old tools as a result of that disbelief. We can only go as far as our beliefs. Uh, literally a YouTube headline, a YouTube title from David Bear. I've been listening to a lot of David Bear lately. And th that, that is, that's just the truth. You can only go as far as your beliefs. And my beliefs wouldn't allow me to go any farther than, well, what I believed. But what I didn't believe were the doors opening in front of me. So that being said, when the world opens up, when you say, okay, these tools are not working anymore. This is not serving me. This is not serving my future. This is actually actively pulling me backwards. And you say no more. The next step is to understand that the world, the universe, God, however you want to define it, is going to open up. And you're going to have to take note of it. And once there is a new path that opens up for you, you have to be aware of it first. I'm not saying take the path. I'm not saying, oh, use these new things that, that come at you. I'm, I'm not here to tell you what to do at all. This channel is solely to serve as a reminder that you are more than the worst thing you've ever done, to quote Brian Stevenson, and that you can always, always go forward. You, you, there's always the option to expand. There's always the option to grow, no matter where you are. That, that's, that's solely what this is here for. And also, the, the other thing is that you have way more power than you'll ever realize. You have way more to you, way more potential than you'll ever realize. And well, the, obviously, the, the thing for these videos is to get you to realize that, right? And so, <laughs> the, the thing when we, when we talk about you can't solve a problem with the tools that created the problem is that once you recognize those tools that created the problem, you recognize that, whoa, okay, this is how I got myself into this mess in the first place. I, I can't use those anymore. No. Then new paths open up and you have the option to create the new tools that are going to serve you. One of the examples that uh, I can give you right now is I'm on a program where I'm eating different. And it has nothing to do with uh, what I was, you know, like, like I have any issues eating or anything like that or working out. I saw a different way of being in uh, a friend who's a trainer. And I was really curious about it. Curious about it for years. This is the wild part. I look at this stuff from afar for years and I'm like, oh, that's cool. Well, I might check in with that two years later. And so... I reach out to him and I say, hey, I think I want to try this program that you, you got put together and I, and I want to document my, um, my progress along the way and then promote it to get it out to people. And he's like, oh, okay, well, I'll give it to you for free. And I said, all right, awesome. So I'm doing this program for free, and, but in return, I'm documenting it and you know, essentially counting all the things that I'm doing, weighing myself, uh, which seems a little bit uh, hyper self-critical, but... Part of the program we'll see what happens and i have to figure i had to figure out a new way of being i was e extremely uneducated on what i was putting into my body I, I i mean i bought a bag of chips at the at the coffee shop about a month ago before this all went down that's not happening again and it's not because I'm against chips or anything like that. It's just I now understand what it is that the chips are to me and how it interacts with my body and then how I feel later on. So, okay, let me give this new thing a try. Pathways open up. I start eating different, start tracking things differently. The beginning, eh, this feels whatever. I feel like I'm kind of like hungry. Man, I want to make a pizza and eat it. No, 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 We're not going to do that. Uh-uh. So... Well, let's replace it with some different foods. So we go out and find out, you know, there's soy-free tofu, there's seitan chorizo, and all these other things. I'm vegetarian, by the way. And I've now on my own, not by my trainer, on my own, I developed the new tools to be. And I feel amazing. Like, I feel way better than I did before. There, my body is going through changes right now that it, it's, it's foreign to itself and it's trying to adapt. And it's going great. So, but the idea is that I wasn't, going to get, I wasn't going to get to where I wanted to go by working out more 
and pummeling my body while putting trash into it. Because if I'm putting trash into my body, you think I'm going to be able to work out more? No, that's not going to happen. Now I'm able to work out twice a day if I want to. And it's not, it's not a, la- a laborious thought for me either. So the, the new tools, I wanted, we're getting back to you now. The new tools that you need to find are tools that are already in front of you. They're, you have them right now. You literally have them right now. The idea is, and I know that seems simple, it seems basic, seems extremely reductive to say that. That's the reality of it. You already have it. You have everything you need right now. The idea is that you have to become conscious and aware of those tools and what they are to get you to the next place. For me, some of those tools were neutrality. Some of those tools were, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Some of those tools were questions of, well, how about we serve first and then ask for something later? How about we take a step back, shut up and listen on this one? And and that was the beginning. And then the bigger steps later on were new tools of, I'm not going to play zero-sum games anymore, which was huge. And it's not just, oh, clicked and now it's all just fine. It's it's a daily practice to not enter into a zero-sum game. All the time, all the time. Because there's old frequencies trying to drag your energy in because those old frequencies want to be fed with your energy. And when you start to kind of stave that off, you give your energy to something new. And now you're starting to grow and expand that. So again, to do that, and this is where we get into the the, the, the practices, the possible practices. One is meditation. And again, I'm not telling you to meditate, but I'm saying meditation for many people is a necessity to put space between your thoughts, put space between some of the, 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 the rigmarole, the, the static. You got to calm it down. You got to be able, and it, again, it seems paradoxical, being still to get more done. I know it sounds crazy, right? And for me, a busybody and a person that's always wanting to do something or always thinks that they need to be doing something, it, it seems ex- incredibly uh, backwards. But once you practice it, once you see the way and the benefit of it, then you can incorporate it into being one of your daily tools, therefore garnering use from it, put, having, having access to it and, and watching the benefit of it throughout your life and being able to utilize it when you need it as opposed to not only not utilizing when you need it, but thinking of it in a laborious way. Because a lot of the times we get this analysis paralysis where we're just like, I know what I need to do, but I'm not doing what I need. I know what I need to do, but I'm not doing what I know I should do. And that just that that line between thought and action it can be there for years, like it was for me for two years with this program. So meditation is one thing. Another thing is going to be unique to you. And this is something that uh, Nero was talking about on YouTube as well. And love the way he puts things together. And he talks about transcending, getting above the issue. And it's about getting a neutrality about it. And transcending is one way to, to, to look at it. Sometimes I look at it as stepping back. You know, I think about Homer Simpson, you know, fading back into the <laughs> fading back into the bush and just disappearing. It is kind of like stepping back. And I mean, there's many, many, many uh, ways to look at it. The other thing I just did that just came to me was Max Payne when he goes into these like hectic situations. And there's just like people like and you hit the button and it slows everything down. And it's just. Psh. You know, and that. That for some people, how can you slow it down? How can you step back? How can you transcend and start to take a look at the situation for what it is, not for what you feel it is? And when you let go of being in it and step back, step back, how can you uniquely to you, how can you gain neutrality, some sense of objectivity? Objectivity we'll get into in a later video because the, the biggest thing that we can get to at, at, at a certain point is pure objectivity and what our integrity is. And so 
what we believe in and, and, all, and, and where we stand and who we are when we've defined ourselves, then we can really stand, you know, when they say standing on business, then we can stand on some business because you're standing on who you know yourself to be, what you know yourself to value, and what you know yourself to do, be, do, have. And got a little ahead of myself, but coming back to being neutral, when you can take a look at it and essentially see it for what it is, gain some objectivity, gain some neutrality, take your emotions out of it as much as you can. And I know that's really tough. This is not easy. I'm, I, again, I don't want to be reductive about this and say this is something you know that's going to be really simple. It's not at all. This is a practice. This is something you got to do all the time. And you got to keep practicing it. And once you can gain some neutrality, then you can look at the situation for possibly what it is and figure out what the new tools can be to solve it, to get, to get ahead of it, to not be back in this place again. I was in the stands watching a football game. And the city that I live in, my mission is to serve as many uh, people experiencing stratification, experiencing disparity, experiencing um, you know, being neglected and underserved uh, in their lives, is to, is to serve people. And so we go out to a lot of community events, and one of them was a football game. And it was a high school football game, and this, this uh, football player, huge. And he went out there, laid somebody out, and then somebody gave him a cheap shot, like after the, the, the whistle. Nobody called it. Nobody saw it. And he came back over to the sideline, and you could tell just, just by his stance, physically, he was emotionally in it. Now he's in a tough situation, right? He's in pads. It's, it's a physically violent game. I've been there. I was literally on that same field where I lost my own you know, mind and I was like, you know, losing the two, crying tears and uh, getting caught up in the moment. However, this, this, this person got caught up in it and you could physically see it happening. You could see them just embedded in the situation. They, they were, there was no neutrality now. This is all subjective. This is all personal now. We, we got to have it out now. And the next play, they went back in, and then they committed a heinous foul, and you know they, they were damn near throwing out the game. But the thing was is that this kid had the talent. This kid had the, the, clearly the, you know, the practice, the skill, you know, the, the going forward into the game. But because he couldn't get outside of the situation, he couldn't exercise some peace, uh, which is, again, there's no judgment on it. It he couldn't solve the problem with the same anger that got him into it. Do you know what I'm saying? The same anger that got him into that issue, he tried to utilize that same anger to get him out of it. And it only made it worse. And we're not even gonna get into the worse. That, we're not going there. That might be for another video, but I don't even wanna dote on that. But the idea is that you have to garner new tools. And once you're able to get what we said first off, practice maybe meditation. The second one is developing a unique tool to you that gets you some neutrality. And then lastly, I, I just want to, this one is tough because you have to envision a situation where everything is different. It's solved, you're above it, it's done. And you have to live from that situation. Work from the accomplished end. I know there's a way better way to, to phrase this. Joseph Rodriguez and Earl Nightingale talk about this all the time. But when you can envision this thing being solved already, knowing that it will not be solved with the tools that were used to get yourself into this situation in the first place, okay, let's reverse engineer. How did that work out? How did that happen? Okay, now how did that happen? Go back down on the ladder. And this is going to take practice. And this is going to take a, essentially like a daily, if not hourly, check-in. And then once after that, we go from unconscious incompetence to unconscious competence. Now, there's a lot of gradients between the two, but you'll be able to get to that spot. And you have to envision yourself in that spot before it's ever really happening. You have to envision it first. And also, you have to be open to some unique tools that are going to serve you some new tools new tools what are those maybe it's therapy maybe it's saying no 
to something. You know, like we say yes to people pleasing all the time. And then maybe, maybe it's doing something radically different, like going for a run or a walk or calling somebody and just talking to somebody. Because a big thing is when we get into isolation, these things exacerbate. And then as we reverse engineer what I was just saying, meditation. So again, the consciousness that got you into a situation is not the consciousness that will get you out of it. The tools that created the problem are not the tools that can solve it. So what are those tools to you? And you can leave some uh, answers in the comments below what those, what those tools might have been for you. Uh, for me and my journey with this channel, it, it turned into instead of you know, telling or belaboring a message on how things should be, it became a message of a question, you know, what can be? And how do you feel about that? And we'll get into that a lot more later. But again, the tools that created the problem are not the tools that can solve the problem. So you, you cannot use tools of war to bring about peace. You just can't. You can't war your way into peace. You're just not going to do it. You're not going to anger your way out of the situation on the football field. You're not going to yell your way out of this argument, okay? So think about some new tools that work for you. All right, meditation, new tools, envisioning a world where there is a resolution. Best of luck, we'll see you in the next video.